too many empty rows up front, you're either at a Gallagher show or a Chin Mu. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I am very honored and pleased to introduce tonight's Distinguished Alumnus Award winner, uh, Robert Moore. Robert is actually the fourth member of the class of 83 to be chosen by the committee, which I have to say, as one of the other 98 members, the undistinguished, <laughs> makes me feel a little bit, okay. nevertheless, we're proud to support our classmate tonight. As you can see from his bio, Rob is an accomplished, prolific, and creative individual who has excelled in a very challenging, cutthroat, and competitive field. He is actually joining an august group of winners from our class. Among them, a noted humanitarian, a television pioneer, a visionary entrepreneur, and tonight, a man who brought us cartoon space monkeys. <laughs> I first met Rob in ninth grade uh, when I transferred to King K from overseas. We took several classes together, English, calculus, Latin, and became good friends. He was always a great student, and we shared a love of music. But really what struck me the most about Rob was his almost total lack of athletic ability. <laughs> really quite a disgrace for his height. But then again, so was I. So, as we progressed through high school, it became obvious that we weren't going to turn heads on the athletic fields. So, we did what generations of high school boys have done before us. We formed a band. <laughs> a jazz band. <laughs> Hello, ladies. <laughs> Robert actually also tried his hand at acting, most notably during uh, Kincaid's production of West Side Story. Although, after a few rehearsals, uh, he had to switch roles, since apparently he made a much more convincing jet than shark. Uh, Robert's career after college has taken him across the country and indeed across the globe. He was nominated for a Fulbright scholarship to study magical realism in Uruguay. True. <laughs> he won a gold Hugo at the Chicago International Film Festival. His screenplay was a finalist for the Sundance Screenwriting Medal, and his movie was given two thumbs up by Roger Ebert, who just happens to be his favorite movie critic. In addition, actually, Rob became fluent in Castilian Spanish, so he could tell what his in-laws were saying about him. As you can tell, Rob is a true Renaissance man, and a most worthy recipient of this award. But perhaps most importantly, Rob is a devoted husband to Ima, a loving father to Jamie and Anna, and a faithful son and brother. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome tonight's honoree and a man I've been privileged to call my friend for over 30 years, Robert Moore. Thank <laughs> you. 
<laughs> he was so thrilled. I, I had no idea. I thought he was like the old bro. But, um, they were all classic Kim K teachers. I, I was interested in literature already. My mom, Jane Atwood, was a brilliant writer. She went for the big money in writing. Poetry. Um, <laughs> my classes at Kim K made me passionate about literature. That's where I met Faulkner, Scott Fitzgerald, and Cumming, Shakespeare, and Chaucer. I went on to become an English major at Williams College. I graduated uh, with honors in English, and I wrote my th senior thesis on Joyce's Ulysses. If that is not a geeky love of literature, what is it? <laughs> but I was introduced to Joyce at Kincaid when we read Portrait of the Artist as a Young Man. I'm not going to make any jokes about what to do with an English major. Uh, you should just Google Garrison Keillor for those. Although, I work with George Carlin, and he said you could always open a point in a pair shop. <laughs> I would say a great career is to be a writer and development executive. Um, you know, I play the piano a lot. I've done a lot of music in my career, and it kind of started in fourth grade. There was this teacher, a piano teacher, Mrs. Hearn, and I stalked her outside her window every day. It was made of glass. I would like fog the breath. I think I followed her to her car once, you know? <laughs> and instead of, and she called my parents and she said, you need to get this boy piano lessons. And I played, you know, after that, I studied for 18 years, I played Williams, I played a cocktail piano in the Berkshires in the summers, you know, to earn extra money. And I owe that to King K, the importance of early musical education, also Mrs. Hearn, whom I saw there every day and it just made me want to play. I started, I still play the clarinet. My neighbors love me. <laughs> Three in the morning in my home studio. But I owe that, you know, Mr. and Mrs. Anderson we were teaching uh, music in fourth grade. One of the reasons I loved it was you weren't allowed to touch the violin. I, you had to play uh, drumsticks for four months to practice. And the clarinet was like, what did all the rest of the buttons do? And that's what I really wanted to find out. It was like, what did all the buttons do, you know? And so I still play clarinet. Um, I'm also a composer. I started in a little bit of composition for film and TV. I'm an ASCAP member. And, you know, my mom played the piano. My dad had an amazing voice. So I had a spark for it, but the catalyst to, like, do something about that was really the King K, you know, to take an interest, turn it into a study, and find a passion about it. Um, also, Spanish. I was obsessed with Spanish. I had great teachers like Senor Morales. We were studying literature, but also electrified by culture, Juan Rufo, Borges, and that Carpentier. I remember speaking Spanish in the car when I was a student here. I trilled my R's. I went, Eva, 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 a white boy trilling his R's, driving down San Felipe every day. I was so excited. <laughs> or I should say, San Felipe. <laughs> I went on to study some comparative lit. I was so jazzed about Spanish from Kincaid. I did my junior year in Madrid thing, which eventually led to meeting my wife, Ima, who is Spanish, and spending a month in Madrid every year for 12 years. I've written a lot of my scripts, actually, while I was there. And this summer, and I, my son and I are going to do the Camino de Santiago in northern Spain with Juan, my Spanish father-in-law. We're going to hike 80 miles in six days sleep in monasteries, eat Spanish tortilla and octopus, and a big part of that journey really started here at Kincaid. Um, not so much P.E. <laughs> <laughs> P.E. was like the only, the only thing, literally, at Kincaid that I couldn't stand, being a gym boy. Um, you know what I'm talking about, the purple shorts, the humiliating Falcon t-shirt, playing hawker. Anyone remember that? <laughs> you remember, it was a mashup of hockey and soccer. And I've had a lot of years of calm reflection and therapy to think about hockey. <laughs> and I think Coach Hart, he was just punking us. <laughs> he was just amusing himself watching us to see if he would actually play it, you know? <laughs> he, he did get me on the golf team. So I'm grateful for that. To get out of PE, I learned to play golf. Uh, I could go on and on. I mean, cartoony. My notes at Kim K were 98% cartoon and 2% notes. And I remember teachers looking at this cartoon saturated notebook, and instead of yelling at me or telling me to focus, they put the cartoons up on the wall. And I ended up having a four year cartoon strip in college, and I've done a lot of uh, drawing and character design for animation, and it, it potentiated it. And I guess the main thing for my career that I really got here was, was about filmmaking. Juana Denley was an amazing librarian, and I'll just give a shout out to the Dewey Decimal System. 
<laughs> you don't care enough about it anymore, do you? Well, Kincaid, there was in a library, there was a book called uh, How to Make Good Movies. And uh, yes, this is the world's most massively overdue library book. <laughs> It was published by Eastman Kodak in the 40s for people who wanted to make 60 millimeter, 8 millimeter, millimeter, millimeter films, but not just to record their kids' birthday parties, but to make story, tell stories, use a narrative form, and do little cheap old effects like making someone disappear. And so because of this book, when I was in fifth grade, my friend David Smith, my brother John, and and I, we made this movie called Bashing Cream about a salesman whose product makes his clients himself disappear. And my sister, we got my sister in it. And pretty soon we started drafting other people into it. And a lot of my classmates may remember that my three friends, Rusty, Ian, Dean, and I made movies in high school. And we engaged our students. We were giving free reign to science auditorium. We called ourselves Bloodbath Productions. <laughs> yes, you can buy Red Food Coloring by the gallon. <laughs> Filmmaking wasn't taught at Kincaid at that time, but we were encouraged by the community, the teachers, and the students alike. And my classmates like Doug Rotan, with whom I play Scramble on my iPhone now, joined in. There was another filmmaking group led by David Mopratami and Tom Biggs. They made brilliant movies like Shakespeare on the Roof. Um, and there was a sense of artistic community, and Kincaid kind of gave rise to little artistic movements, and our teachers they not only picked up on it and potentiated, they also starred in all of our show. I mean, eight or nine teachers totally going for it, you know, starring in our movies, and they turned into something cool. Well, years later, I started working in television first as associate producer for a pilot that aired nationally on uh, PBS American Playhouse series. Then, as part of a small team, an option in Bill Stike's kids' book Shrek, we, which we developed and sold at DreamWorks. It led me to develop an option or sell material at other studios like Paramount, MGM, and DreamWorks. And I, Ram production and development for the producer of the Trek movies for about 10 years. And I'm not saying that everything that I am interested in or did had its origin at Kincaid. It didn't. But I had a spark, and plenty of people in life have a desire or a spark to do something, but not the encouragement, the teaching, and the community that you need to turn your desire into meaningful actions. And that evolution of wanting to try something and being able to take chances and turn it into something bigger than yourself, I'm so grateful for that. Kincaid was, and I think is, an amazing combination. Receptive artistic community, there's mentorship, really inspiring teachers, a sense of silly abandon, and a wonderful feeling of a catalyst of turning the spark into a fire that may spread to other people or in ways that you, you can't even predict. Um, I'm also really thrilled that my amazing nephews, Henry and James, who are here are at the school. They're incredible lower schoolers. My sister Mary is a Kincaid parent. I mean, wow, my little sister is a Kincaid parent. I graduated from Kincaid in 1883. I, <laughs> <laughs> I visited James's classroom today, and I am a rock star in the first grade. It's amazing. <laughs> it was amazing and fun, and so much fun to get to visit. Thank you, James, for having me. I know I don't give back enough. I'm, I'm a judge right now for UCLA's graduate learning program competition. I, I try to be a mentor. Um, I'll try to do more in the future. Um, I'm going to show very briefly just a few clips of some things I've done and a couple of things I'm working on. But for my chat portion, I just wanted to conclude it by going back to my opening word, which is gratitude. I'm grateful, above all else, that my loving parents, Jane and Marvin, valued education so highly. They really felt it was the number one thing that a parent can give a child. Education is only, it's one of the only real things, along with love, that lasts. And when I think about what great education is, it's not just learning a set of facts or gaining specific abilities. It's teaching critical thinking and creative thinking. It's teaching thoughts that create actions. So for me, Kim K was my portrait of the artist as a young man. And to my mom, Jim, who's here today, to my dad, Marvin, who I'm sure is watching over us all, my amazing teachers, wonderful classmates, my dear friends, and the wonderful Kim K community, I just say humbly and sincerely thank you very much.
you should make beer kind of a seven pack because what's the one thing you always want after you finish your six? One more. Right? <laughs> <laughs> it's a really fun kind of picaresque adventure. Um, Alien Rock Band is something I'm attached to as co-executive producer. It's with John Stevenson who directed uh, Kung Fu Panda. It's a adventure, musical adventure story about rock and roll band from Earth that's really dysfunctional. There's one girl, they like each other, no one can quite get along, and they get, they fall into this battle of the bands, which is an intergalactic competition. Every kind of music you like has its own planet. There's planet speed metal, planet boy band. It's kind of, and Slash is gonna play like a, a musical character with a giant claw and plays the guitar. There's like, it, it's a funny, uh, interesting thing with a lot of good musical tie-ins. Um, a lot of people have done interesting stuff on uh, Salem. I'm working with a really great uh, TV producer named Harvey Myman. My idea about it is, instead of telling a morality tale about people who basically jump on the bandwagon out of their own understandable fear and persecute the innocent, I'd like to validate not the historical truth, but the emotional truth, which is that they were absolutely scared. These people lived believing in the devil and probably saw him everywhere. And like Walking Dead, like a lot of great shows with a bit of a supernatural twist in it. This is a, a really great tawdry soap opera with some real supernatural elements where they really do need to burn that witch because it's very scary. So it's, it's really fun. This next one, I'm not, I won't describe it. It's a great psychological thriller. Um, I'm really excited. It's like the best thing I've written. I just wanted to show you, I call these posters. They're fake movie posters. I do these in Photoshop because it really helps the buyer in the studio understand what you're trying to do. So these are all just like stolen images from other sources put together with a cool logo. And we do a lot of, we call them Ripomatics posters. Uh, there's a lot of like graphic stuff. And finally, uh, if you saw the movie uh, Cowboys vs. Aliens, it was based on a comic by these guys, Platinum Comic, Platinum Studios. I uh, produced a graphic novel uh, called Sensational. And then we kind of have a cross-platform it. It's coming out shortly as a graphic novel, which is cool but also we we're trying to do it as a, as a TV series about, it. it's, it's another one of these kind of supernatural investigation stories where the difference is the guy who is leading it formally wrote for tabloid and doesn't leave a word he's written about anything. And yet there is some mysterious surprising truth that lurks behind each of the stories that he's done. So anyway, uh, thank you. That's a smattering of what I've done. Thanks for letting me chat about it.